Hi, I'm Bob Sweeney from the City of Juneau Cable Access TV, here today with Doslin's head football coach, Doug Miller. Hello, Doug. Hi, Bob. Nice to see you again. Thank you, you too. All right, we're here today to do a preview of the 2016 football season, upcoming football season for Dodsland. Uh, this is your third year now, isn't it, as head coach? Correct. All right, and how are things going in general? I think pretty well. I've, I've been pleased with, with most of what's happened. I, I really like the kids. I think our kids have been excellent. In and, what way? Uh, they, they do what they're asked. They work hard. Um, they're combative, and they're just fun to be around. All right, a little bit about last season. What was your record from last season? Last year we were six and three. Um, we were five and one in our conference. Lost to Marcus Ann on a play in the last minute of the game. And, um, so, you know, we, we played pretty well within our conference. Um, we lost to Cambria Friesland early in the year when we had lost our first game and it was their second and you could tell we were a little green and and, uh, and they had a very nice team. They ended up going undefeated and then um, we lost to Mineral Point at the end of the season in the playoffs 41-40. Yeah, it was quite a wild game, wasn't that it? That was a good game. I mean, it, uh, I, I think our kids were very, very proud of how they played and, and uh, enjoyed being in that kind of exciting uh, atmosphere at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you're losing some people. Who are some key people that you're losing? We're losing eight seniors, and um, you know Jackson Seifser um, was the conference MVP as far as defensive linemen, offensive MVP, played in the All-Star game, uh, rushed for over a thousand yards. <laughs> Joe Kane, our starting quarterback. defensive back. Davey Grunewald, Gruenberg, he um, started both ways, tight end, defensive end. And King fakes the hand up, looks to throw across the middle, it is tip, tip the second, and caught! Grunewald, the tight end, off the double deflection, and gets out to the 45 yards on a game of 21. Oh, low snap. Oh, it's on the ground. And making the tackle on the six yard line was Davey Grunberg, defensive end. Our three interior offensive linemen who also play defense, uh, Taylor Rayom, Logan Stouffer, and Brandon Kluge, uh, starting defensive back, uh, three year starter, um, Topher Justman. And then also a defensive end, tight end, uh, Derek Zeem. And uh, Burrow. And Josh Burrow. Josh Burrow, yeah. The wrestler. Well, yeah. So you remember. And Josh was a two-year starter um, as an outside linebacker. You know, had yeah. a real good year. They did a nice job last year for you. you know, I, I was really impressed with the way those guys played. All right, this year, how many do you have out right now? We have 34, right on the nose every day. Um, they, you know, you'd, uh, we'd like to have more. Um, uh, we lost, uh, probably lost an opportunity to recruit some kids because we added a third sport in the fall. But um, we have not had a kid miss who had not accounted for themselves ahead of time. Mm -hmm. No phone calls late. No. Um, so, so it's been been very good. They're showing some responsibility. Yes, yeah. and some respect for their teammates and. Um, and it's just enjoyable to go to practice, see everybody, or you know one kid said, hey, family's doing this, or we're going to be here. Um, okay. Uh, you have some different teams in your lineup this year. We sure do. I yeah. mean, they, they swapped out our conference a little bit. Um, really three new teams in our conference because Horicon now has added Husesford. Mm -hmm. They both had over 28 kids returning from each team. So they will, they will have the most returning 
numbers of players mm -hmm. uh, in our conference, and you add their two enrollment together, mm -hmm. um, they'll be they'll be up there quite a bit. And that's your last game of the season. Yeah. Okay. And um, then we we took on to the Trailways Large, which is our division, uh, Orfordville Parkview, so Parkview High School, and Palmyra Eagle. Now, is that uh, conference-wide, or is, I mean, for all sports, or is it just football? Just football for this year, mm -hmm. and then next year it will be they, they will join the conference in a complete fashion. Okay, you lost a team too, right? We lost two, Deerfield and Oshkosh Lourdes have moved down into the small division. Oh, I see, because these two teams you're bringing in are larger than those two schools. Right. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. I was wondering where Deerfield had gone. Okay, so let's talk about your individuals you have this year. All right. Where would you like to start? I don't care. You start. Well, seeing uh, I run the, the offense and Coach Selkert starts with the defense, We'll pay respect to Coach Selkert and we'll start with defense. <laughs> and the game is one up front, so uh, we have to replace our whole defensive front. Um, we had Logan and Taylor and Jackson and Davey as our, as our front four last year. So, um, you know, that, that's going to be a big task. And um, we're looking at some of our, you know, our kids that are going to be our offensive linemen are going to probably share those defensive tackle duties so we can keep them, keep them healthy. But um, uh, Christopher Gomez, who was the heavyweight wrestler as a freshman last year, has really matured, lifting well. Um, Brandon Ketter has really put in the time and has gotten bigger, stronger, and faster. Um, so I, I would guess those two will probably start off um, and then we'll probably as use two tackles. as the two defensive tackles, mm -hmm. and we'll probably use um, Patrick Kane and um, Troy Stocky to to rotate with them, and, and they both had nice opening weeks. Um, at our defensive ends, it'd be a little interesting because we we have a lot of options depending on how the linebacker falls. Um, Jordan Marsh, who couldn't play because of shoulder surgery last year, has had a nice training camp, and he certainly could play defensive end. Um, Cody Nails is in the quarterback running. If he ends up playing quarterback, I probably won't use him at defensive end. But um, if Cody Kutcher plays quarterback, then I'll probably feel a little more at ease to, to put Nails at, the, at a defensive end. That way, Tyler Krause can play defensive end, and uh, we had a Dalton Pergandi um, came out as a junior for the first time, and he had had a, a elbow injury that kept him out the last couple of years. But Dalton has showed even this early that that he can play, that he understands um, he's going to be in the mix. So whether it's at defensive end or outside linebacker or inside linebacker, we'll. St we're still learning about him. He's, he's still learning it too, but he could do that. Okay. Um, our inside linebackers, Andrew Mountain returns. Andrew had a really good year last year. Um, he seems to find the open slot to go through in order to get tackles. He fits Andrew has a, well. He just has a knack. Yeah. I mean, both offensively and defensively, yeah. he, he has a knack and, and um, you know, the, the, the trick is not to overuse him, but as a junior he was playing both ways mm -hmm. and so we're pretty comfortable that he'll be able to do that. Um, Austin Hebner, who normally is a defensive tackle, um, asked if we would look at him as an inside linebacker. And Austin ran our fastest 300 in our fitness test. He benched 280 which is down a little bit just because he, his summer job was, was so intense. Cutting into his lifting, was it? It was, it was, yeah. Cause he well, was, 280 is pretty good for a... He was, he was at 300 while he was trying wow. to hold weight during wrestling season. So. Wow. Um, but he also went to state and track. You know, um, he tied Matt Moynihan for our fastest 40, and they ran against each other twice. You know, so they both ran 4-6. So Austin has 
all the physical traits that you'd like to see in a middle linebacker, 5'11", 190, whether or not he's comfortable with that position. Because he hasn't played it for before. Hasn't played before. And you, it's an instinctive position, probably more than anything else on defense, the middle linebacker, to be able to step up and to, and to read guards. So we'll see. But um, he certainly can cover ground, and he certainly can take things on. And, um, so, so those two, um, Peter Mountain played a really good JV inside linebacker last year. <laughs> Outsides, um, Cody Kutcher will probably be on one side, and Kutcher was our team's defensive player of the year last year. He was corner last year, was he not? He was more of an outside linebacker, okay. um, just because, and, and he's played corner his sophomore year, but he is so good at reading and getting into things. He was your best um, open field tackle last year. Yeah, I would, I mean, yeah. and, and part of that was because he could get there. Mm -hmm. You know, he could see things before it developed and, and read and, and, and so he's he's really he's really a good def defensive player. Mm -hmm. um, on the other on the other side, not quite set because we've got some guys vying for defensive back, and our defensive backs are also similar to outside linebackers in in what we're going to do. So you know, Dan Moynihan. safety but we're going to get Zach on a corner so we've got a tall corner mm -hmm. to match up against some of these teams that come out with this big wide receiver look and um, we had quite a bit of that last year I mean, you know it just gives us a little flexibility Tristan Miller is a two-year starter at corner on the other side. Mm -hmm. Any of those guys could move up to the outside linebacker, and any of those guys could play the deep, deep thirds or, or man coverage. <laughs> Derek Anthalt is also another guy that has been playing there and has been been doing real well. You're talking outside linebacker or defensive back. No, I mean they've been they've been practicing. The outside backers and the defensive backs have been practicing together because mm -hmm. we'll roll one way and mm -hmm. they're almost like strong safeties. So so we feel pretty good about kids that we have. You think right now the key is the line? Most things start there, yeah. whether it's offense or defense. You, you know, and uh, you know somebody can run at you all day long. 
it's going to make it tough. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, and that was the thing about last year's team. They couldn't run on you, so they resort, resorted to the pass an right. awful lot last year. Yeah. So, yeah, you're right about that. And if, if, if we don't have guys that can hit and read naturally, then we will move them. Predetermined stunts and slants. and So I think we can get it done. I, you know, and, I, and I like the kids that we have. It just... We, we graduated seven guys on both sides of the ball. These are some pretty good athletes you got. You lost, too. Right. I mean, they're very, yeah, they are very good. Yeah. But in this game, as you know, high school athletics. Yeah. It changes every year, doesn't it? changes every year. And, yeah. and this year's group, I'm real excited about. You know, um, We have some good athletes to work with, and we're, we're looking forward to taking them with on Friday nights. Okay. Um, offense? Yep. We have two guys competing at quarterback. I would be real comfortable with either one of them. Um, Cody Nails brings us uh, a little bit more of a thrower and a guy that can use his length. How um, tall is he? He is 6'3", once, and he's put some weight on, so he's up to 170 now. Do you think it makes a difference that he's left-handed? might make a difference to him, and it doesn't make a difference to me. <laughs> if you recall, I had a son that was about 6'3", 170, <laughs> left-handed. Does it, does, it, does it have any, any bearing on how you might roll the quarterback out or something like that, that if that's such a play like that or not? It, it would a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, last year we had... A, we had um, a certain pass play that we only threw to the right because it was one step and throw. Mm -hmm. Well, we put it in both ways because <laughs> which only call it one way. <laughs> depending on which quarterback is in there, we can we'll throw that play like that. And um, so, yeah, I mean, there's there's a few little twists, mm -hmm. but not uh, not for ninety two percent of the plays. Yeah, you know, it shouldn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. But Kutcher. We're gonna we're gonna back our quarterbacks away from center. We're gonna run out of a pistol, and we're both gonna, of them, both, both quarterbacks of them. at this time. Okay, offense is real similar. So if we walked in on Thursday and say we don't like the pistol, all the plays are run exactly mm -hmm. out of being under center, mm -hmm. and so it's it's not like a it's not a huge gamble or or this, but we have not taken a snap under center yet. Really. Uh, hmm. Because we want, I mean, we are going to commit to running this. And I did that same when I put the single wing in in, in Waterloo. Mm -hmm. And we had to kill the clock and we hadn't taken a snap under center yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I may, I may do that <laughs> a little bit here. <laughs> yeah, so. But, but it was, guys, we have nothing to fall back on. We have to be able to do it this way. And I think you have a better chance of being successful if you... Yeah. If you insist on doing it this way. Right. Yeah. We believe it's going to work. They respond better if you say, this is what we have to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so either of those guys could play quarterback. Nails has been working at tight end. Now he's a sophomore. Nails no, no. is a junior. Junior. I'm sorry. Yes, junior. Kutcher is a senior. Mm -hmm. uh, we run couple option looks, which which Kutcher, being a very good runner, is to his advantage, is now out of the pistol, you're running downhill a little bit more than you are under center where you're coming across sideways. So so for the quarterback, coming out of the pistol makes running the ball um, okay. a bigger advantage. And um, But if Kutcher, if, if Nails is playing quarterback, Kutcher could play running back. Patrick could play wing. He, he'll be there. He's yeah. So he's going to be on the field someplace. He's going to be <laughs> on the field yeah. someplace, yeah. whether we got the ball or whether yeah. or not they do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And 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 he'll be very successful either way. Um, running backs. Andrew Mountain returns. Hand off to Mountain up the middle, busting through, breaking tackles. Oh, nice run.
probably move from wing to running back. mostly, but we can also use him at the wing. Um, our wing right now, um, as of Saturday morning, um, was Zach Younger. And a tall, lanky guy that um, runs the ball um, deceptively better than you would think for being long and lean and lanky and visible, um, but, he, but he runs smart and um, he certainly, when we put him in motion, should give people some matchup trouble as far as a receiver too. He's not going to be standing still in one spot. And, um, so. So right now we're, we're looking at, at some of that combination. Um, that tight end position, like I said, Nails could play. Peter Mountain could play that. Jordan Marsh is looking really good there right now. Um, our split end is Anthal. Tristan Miller, Tristan's probably been there a little bit more, but um, there will be a little bit of movement once we get more comfortable with which quarterback we're going to use. Mm -hmm. uh, Nails plays, maybe I can put Cutcher at running back and leave Moynihan at the wing. Mm -hmm. Like it was last year. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've run a lot of jet sweeps with him and counters mm -hmm. and stuff. So. Well, Danny could do that too, couldn't he? Danny can do that. Yeah. Yes, he can. So I think we have some good options. We have kids, kids that have speed. Got kids that have come off successful track season, um, and then up front we return our two offensive tackles. Um, Tyler Krause's going to be a three-year starter at left tackle. He's six-five, two and a quarter right now. <laughs> Two of Cameron. Kane under center turns around. The toss goes to Seitzer. He's got a blocker. 40. Outside 35. 30. Makes the tackle. 25. 20. 15. 10. 5. Touchdown. Douglas. And Hebner will be the other tackle. Well, and was the other tackle last year. And off to Mountain, up the middle, busting through, breaking tackles. Oh, nice run. That's a nine yard touchdown run for Jackson. 
Hicks and Spencer. So we've got to, got to fill the two guards in our center position. And right now, pretty comfortable is Chris Gomez is going to be either center or right guard. And he's going to get a higher ticket. He's going to get a higher He's through, he's through, he's through. He's going. Ketter is going to either be right guard or center. They, you know, and I, and I talked to him about both of those guys trying to compete for that center job. So they take centering, you know, seriously, and then the ball gets there. So we have two guys that we really like, and then one of you will play right guard. But, but that'll work out good. Um, Troy Stocky. Um, our kicking game, we're going to have, uh, you know, Zach Forden was all-conference kicker last year, and I don't know, I don't want to guess at how many different days he took to go to different camps around the Midwest, but it was more than five or six. He was, he went to a lot of stuff, he showcased himself, he learned from some of the best in the country and uh, has really looked good so far in practice. Um, now he's a guy, he probably could have lost to soccer, isn't he? Could have, I said. Two years ago, maybe. Yeah. 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 But, but he really wants to, to be a kicker. He wants mm -hmm. to kick in college. I see. Um, and, and actually, if he wasn't a very good kicker, he, we'd more serious look at him as one of our defensive back type position, but we got enough, enough people there right now. But you know, if we'd run into injury problems, you know, Zach had a real good track season, far better than I thought he thought he would. But yeah, and you know he was he was our best triple jumper, you know, in that 38 upper 38 range. So he's he's turned into quite a nice athlete. From the little boy he was two years ago, when you know, yeah. they, they grow up, don't they? They grow up, and, and and they don't all grow up at the same rate or at the same time, you know. So it's, but he's yeah, he'll be he will also be our punter because when he went to all these camps, he worked on his place kicking, but he also worked on on learning how to punt well. And mm -hmm. He's got a lively leg, so and Cutcher returns as our holder. Younger and stocky, seem to snap the ball pretty well. So. Younger? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. Um, you just got to find somebody who can get the ball back there. Right. Um, I mean, yeah. for quite a few years, yeah. we've protected snappers, mm -hmm. and so it doesn't matter. It's you need somebody that has fast hands and good yeah. ball skills to mm -hmm. throw it back to the same spot. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Yeah. You have some return people. We should. <laughs> you better. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't have to use them a real lot on the kickoff stuff, but it's not a good sign if you return a lot of kickoffs. <laughs> but um, Kutcher is, is, is a returning return man. He can do both 
kickoffs and punts. Um, Matt Moynihan is an awfully good return guy. Dan Moynihan, you know, if we put three guys back for kickoffs, it'd probably be those those three. But um, you know, you could take an Andrew Mountain who maybe doesn't have that as great a foot speed, but he does have a knack of finding where to go. He's yes. hard to tackle in the open yes. field. He runs over people sometimes. And, yeah, you know, and, and and deceptively he would be a very good kick returner. Mm -hmm. So um, we have, we have good choices and, and kids that that'll be that'll do a good job. You know, Kutcher returned the one last year where we didn't think they were going to kick it to us because we were ahead late in the game with about six seconds to go. And he says, do I go back there? I said, just go back there. They won't kick it to you. And they did. And well, seven, eight seconds later, he's in the other end zone. <laughs> but uh, so so we like that. We like that part of the game. I mean, I, I, I'm pretty, pretty comfortable with the way those guys can be able to handle the ball very, very well. Okay. Who do you have Thank for you. coaches? Well, Tom Selkert, Tom was, I think this is his 21st year as a football coach in Dodgeland. I remember that well because we gave him an award for 20 years <laughs> last year. <laughs> um, and, and Tom is, you know, when, when I was looking at coming over here, um, I had to call one of the guys I know on the, on the faculty at Dodge and just to try to find out how to spell Selkert's last name. But Selkert lived down the hallway from me when he was a freshman at UW Lacrosse. And we played on the same intramural basketball team. And you know, we sort of enjoyed coaching against each other back in the, you know, the, the 90s and stuff when our kids were going through. So, um, you know, I called Tom and, uh, and we talked about about Dodgeland and, and things that, that could happen here. Um, he's our, our defensive coordinator, and he really looked forward to having an opportunity to, to do that, and especially over a consistent number of years. You know that um, he's been at once or twice before, but at a at sort of a one-year shot, and then somebody else would come in and. He's done really well, and he works hard, and he watches film, and um, he checks all practice plans, you know, ahead of time, make sure he's got things ready to install. And been a very good assistant, and we. This is a a big game with a lot of guys on the field, and you don't do it as, you know, there's not just five guys out there, and a head coach can get by. <laughs> we got we got to have good staff. Um, the other two guys that are that are on the staff are brothers, Derek and Quinn Peeper. So you had some consistency. Yeah, yeah, same staff from last year, mm -hmm. um, and we get along very well. I th I think those two young guys give us a nice blend. You know, they have that different type of enthusiasm that that uh, some kids gravitate towards and and enjoy and. They are both guys that have played college football. They, they understand the game. They come from a family that uh, has sort of valued coaching. So, uh, good guys, good staff right now. What teams do you uh, expect to be pretty good in the conference this year? Well, until we can beat Marcus and they'll be the first one on my list. Now, they lost people last year. So did we. But if you have, if you have a a lifting program in your school, and they do. And I think they have some some good young coaches there that are that are good guys. Um, uh, their their defensive coach I taught with his dad when I was in Clintonville. And um, you know, they they get my respect as far as being able to field a, a good program, a good team, you know. They had a good JV squad, so so they would be my first. Um, Parkview, I talked with their coaches at at our clinic. They're very excited to come in. We'll, we'll see, you know that, but they come out of out of the 
Rock Valley Conference, and it's bigger football. Right. It's it's um, yeah. you know bigger programs, mm -hmm. and um, so so it's sort of an unknown. But but I but I think um, I think they seem to like who they have coming back, mm -hmm. and they seem to know know quite a bit about our conference already, and had watched film on people. And, I'm not sure who got the Partyville job, and um, Partyville head coach resigned last year, so they've got a new face there and some talent. Um, hard to tell, and then Montello, Prince, and Green Lake. Um, you know, the, with the Princeton Green Lake end of it having such good track and field, there's always kids that can run coming into that program. Uh, their staff has been real stable. I've known them for years and years. So, And then you've got Husesford and Horicon waiting for us at the end of the season. That is sort of an unknown. You know, the thing about those two teams is they haven't been doing well. And it takes a while, in many cases, to get these kids to understand that they can win. They need right. some wins first before they believe in themselves. Yeah. And unless they do that, you know, they could be not a long season for them. I said, and unless yeah. they can get some wins. Yeah. 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 But I think they'll have they'll have more athletes to put on the field mm -hmm. than either of them individually enjoyed sure. in the of past. Course, yeah. Yeah, right. And we'll see. At the end of the year, if they're on a roll, they'll be real tough. Yes. And if they've not had good times, then uh, they'll be down a little bit. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Nothing that comes to my mind. So you're going to have another good season? We're going to have another good season. Good. I, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Bob.